All right, you're live. Welcome back, guys. I hope you guys had a great lunch. Uh, we had a lot of questions come in um, about how do you approach a bottleneck in a type of situation coming out of the paint booth and at the end of the line. Um, one of our shop visuals here, um, we will only work off of you know a certain amount of bays that are available for that. Um, just like in our reassembly bays, they're all going to be um, located in the green area on the floor. Um, this side is not in production at the moment. Um, we're actually working up this side of the cell, um, so I'll give you a kind of a tour of that. But we have two reassembly bays, so identifying the two reassembly bays, that there is two vehicles in that bay, there's obviously some work that needs to get performed. We need to resource that area so we can actually advance our line. Um, because the boost cycles, they could flow in and then they could stop, um, and then we wouldn't have anywhere to flow out. Um, a lot of the other questions that kind of came in is, you know, obviously if there's, there's more areas, you know, more spots, we would call it available. You know, some technicians, they want to expand the spaces. You know, we, we don't want to expand spaces um, only because that's creating more work. You know, we want to approach that bottleneck on the way that it is sitting, our visual wise with it, and resource that area accordingly so we can break the bottleneck and allow production to flow. Because um, creating that consistent flow is going to be the most ideal thing about it. Um, and that's really where the, the shop floor ind indicators come in at because we're at a stopping point, we can't flow anymore. So that's kind of one of the one of the items I wanted to touch on um, and get that, you know, the, how to break that bottleneck, how to create that flow again. So um, hopefully it answered that question on it. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions coming in quite yet. Nothing really Not quite yet. yet. So one thing that we'll touch on a little bit more is the inventory tables. Um, I think a few questions arise on that. Our CMAC inventory tables here. Um, everything's all color coded to a certain area of the vehicle again. Um, really, really, really ideal with it. This system isn't set up quite yet. We would have the dots and all the other colored items all available for that use of it. So that's kind of that, that topic of it. The technicians really utilize this table um, for the clips and fasteners and the bolts and all that other items. So when they are taking that off, they're putting that right where that diagram is located. That way they're ensured to what color code that, that uh, bag's going back on to. Um, so hopefully that got that one all question and all answered. Um, we'll move over and you know kind of show a little bit of production and how it's flowing at the moment after our pitch. Um, we, have a, we do have a midday pitch every time after lunch kind of go over every single item on our on our production screen and how we address it and where we need to tackle it. Same thing as like a shop floor visual, but now it's on our next year's production screen which we use to manage our production. Um, with that being said, we, um, we did have one time that come out of the booth here um, that we shared as well. Um, we're actually correcting it at the moment for any type of any little imperfection or anything that's in the paint. And this is what kind of Tanoi is doing over here. Um, with this Odyssey band that came out. So, we're currently getting this tackled. That way we can flow into our reassembly process right over here. And obviously we got two open bays right now. So open bays, we want them to try to fill those in, try to get that tackled as quickly as possible so we can consistently flow again. Because this one's actually held up at the moment while he's getting everything all ready for it to come in. So we're currently on a kind of a hold type of stage, so that's why we're addressing this, so we can move it forward and get it back into the process. So it's, a, it's an indicator where we need something to come into and flow into right now. So our resource allocation when the, after our midday pitch was he was going to work on that, so we can actually address that, get it moving forward. And then another technician is going to follow it and put the assembly to put it on so we can continue to flow through the whole process. So, that's great. Um, you want to snag Adam right now and kind yeah, of talk? Yeah, absolutely. One, one thing that I'll do here is I'm going to grab one of our technicians. Um, we want to touch on the career advancements and all that fun stuff. So, I will be right back. I'm going to go grab him and then we'll kind of go from there. So just be a few minutes, uh, one of the <laughs> technicians he's currently out right now that I want to get a hold of, but um, 
just from my point of view as well, um, I'll go over kind of a little career advances with myself. Um, started off over at our Mentor, Ohio location, moved out here to Columbus. I used to um, kind of be a detailer at the beginning of the stages. Um, that's kind of the most important step, I feel like, in our process. A lot of people feel like it's not, but I, I feel like it really is, because that's going to be the last point of that process where that vehicle comes to pick up for that customer. You know, making that making that vehicle back to that brand new condition, um, really holding that value for that customer, gives it really a satisfaction. Um, so after that, um, I asked for some career growth and other items like that. And DCR was willing to you know get me into a few other stages in the process, and then I moved out here to help manage this uh, facility out here. So the career advances that the opportunity to this itself is really all there and that hands free so it's really awesome. Um, so it's a really cool and interesting thing in that type of way um, because you never would really realize uh, how much advancement you have until it's really there and you're grasping. So it's pretty cool. It is. So um, we'll, move, we'll move over to um, kind of the CMAC area, give a nice little tour of it. That and other type of items. Cool. Like that. Give a we'll give a little walk around and see what um, Robert over here is doing with uh, one of his technicians and taking apart the vehicle and kind of inspect and watch how they're, they're mapping the vehicle and showing how they're actually going to repair the vehicle. So what are we doing to this one, Eric? Well, right now we're checking our hands. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got a couple of, we got a process we do. Mm -hmm. uh, we do picks pre-video and with our picks we do one from the rear, one from each side of the rear, from the front, each side of the front, and then we do pre-video. Pre-video just goes through. Green is uh, accident related. Red is previous damage. And uh, when I do my pre-video, I kind of just explain that. Do you feel like it's beneficial oh. doing that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, a lot of the times. When I'm marking in red, someone will come back and be like, well, that wasn't there before. Right. And if it wasn't marked in red, we're probably on Facebook. Right. That's definitely an identifier. So, that's awesome. No, thank you. We appreciate that. Probably getting, getting back over here. Um, kind of want to probably lead off on the, the CMAC area of it. I'm going to go and grab Rob. We can go over those types of yeah, items. Absolutely. I don't know if anything. Any questions or anything came up quite yet? Nothing yet. Got some people coming back from lunch with a full belly. Not yeah. ready to. We're not ready to participate yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll go and grab Rob, and I'll come right back, and we can kind of go over that. See if any questions come up. Yeah. All right. So I'm not sure what you guys left off, but right, obviously we did a basic discussion about the CMAX system. It has a lot of potential. Has a lot of ability. Is really about us being able to keep up with it. Um, that even in large ways is the biggest component, right, to be able to produce what it can do. Right? It decreases the time that that vehicle is actually in the booth. You're not actually baking the whole vehicle throughout that whole process. And after it's leaving your traditional frame chamber, it actually goes into what we call the Comutron. That's actually doing a final bake on that clear coat. Right, it can actually, if you look all the way into the back, you have the archways that'll actually run back and forth across this would be the passenger side of the vehicle for that final cure, allowing us to get that vehicle out and do some correction work at the time. So we had one, Less air movement. somebody asked uh, how many cars per day out the door? <laughs> uh, it really ranges. Say five to six would be a daily average vehicles. And then somebody asked what the yellow cone on top of the car behind us uh, meant. Yellow cones signify an internal vehicle in our process, right? So it would be like antenna up. We're trying to turn those vehicles for our partner as fast as possible. So it's a signal for the team and everyone in the shop to keep an eye on it. 
Um, we have Robert Wolf here who's kind of led the, the opening of the team down here on the revenge side. So Robert, you want to just go over the equipment, facilities, I guess probably people want to know just, just the difference between a CMAX system and a traditional stout wrap? Yeah, I do that. So with the CMAC equipment, it allows for a faster drying process with base coat and sealer along with your clear. Um, it just allows you to get more cycles through per day. But one of the differences between this and a conventional booth is, you know, you can't stuff the entire booth full. It's not designed that way, so you do strategic cycles with the CMAC equipment to dry it faster per cycle. So allowing you to have more cycles versus jamming right. the boots full. Well, in a sense that that creates a steady flow, right? There's similar size things coming through the boot consistently versus, hey, we're gonna cram this boot full of as much as we can, and then all of a sudden comes out all at the same time, right? right. We're consistently producing something out of the paint boot because of the technology, right? Something can be curing here while we're also working on something in the spray in the spray trunk right. for that next cycle coming through, right? Traditionally, you're going to be sitting and waiting while that's baking, right? Right. With this, we're able to advance that vehicle into a drying chamber, right? Let it bake here while we're on to that next vehicle. So, really allowing us to produce more, right? Splitting cycles in half. Sometimes, right, you are taking that and you know, cycling may have the body in one and the parts in the other. Right. Another advantage would be uh, the CMAC drying process. When it's dry, it's dry. There's no shrinking back, there's no dying back of you know a regular bake cycle. You know, it's still with a regular bake cycle, it's still curing when it's when it comes out. So CMAC, when it's dry, it's dry. So yeah, it's ready to go. So you can start correcting it as soon as it comes out. You don't have to let it sit or nothing. So. Any cool. questions there, Dave? Or nothing yet. Nope. Right. Well, anything that you would say, you know, in your two years working with this equipment, you know, what's your thoughts on it? How does it help the DCR model? Somebody asked, do they uh, do they spray water? Yeah, yeah. water one base go, sickens auto wave. Salt sealer salt. Um what about like the energy usage or lack thereof or right. Well it's way more efficient. Um, and then maybe talk a little bit about like panel specific curing as opposed to like the whole vehicle and the, and the energy usage that uh, like a, to go along with it. Right. Yeah. I mean, kind of just what we covered, just this part of it, right? We're specific to this passenger side on the vehicle that's currently in there, right? Versus here, we have a whole vehicle up to that temperature. Um, you know, you can set that specific to a certain amount of centimeters and meters in our paint booth where, okay, we're just doing a bumper or a fender, right? 
I think so. Yeah, no, no more questions as far as the CMAC goes. Yeah, 
2010 Accord, damaged here to the left front. Do you know what the facts of the loss were? Uh, the facts of the loss? So if we're looking at a repair like this, we're going to ask a lot of questions, you know, why, what needs to be out of the way to get that proper repair finished, like what items, you know, in this kind of an impact, what, what items do we need to look further into, right? Um, a lot of those items can be just done really quick in conversation, but we're also going to walk through the repair plan to make sure that what we're developing here is going to be a work order for our team throughout this whole process, right? So if it never makes it onto this paperwork, how, how are we as a team going to be able to provide that repair for our customer, right? We need to be able to document and have all the information here so that it goes through the rest of our process streamlined. Um, once it hits, like we said earlier, ready inventory or a body repair point, it's not going to stop. It's ready to go back to the customer when we're done. So, if we're looking at this vehicle from a standpoint of okay, this is where we're at right now. Ian, what items stick out to you as far as what would need to be out of the way to perform a repair? Well, if we're starting up here, definitely have that the radiator condenser, the battery, the air box. Um, where that welds in on the other side, there's the power steering reservoir, the windshield washer reservoir. And then that ABS unit is also in the weld zone, so it'll have to come be pulled back out of the way. Right. Um, of course, all the wiring comes around. Um, um, definitely, I think we're going to replace the separate reel. So part of that, I think the towel panel, the wipers, that stuff out of the way, the seal out of the way, the, the cable for the hood release have to come back. And this is the big thing to stick out right here looking at it. Right. Really in the idea of you know all those items that we just discussed, then we are gonna take action on it, right? We're gonna get these items removed because we wanna have this. Once that vehicle leaves this part of our production, it needs to be ready for that next person downstream. It needs to be clearly identified as to what we're doing. Right. So if we get all these items out of the way, that next stop along the way. It's not gonna stop. It's gonna continue to move. Everything is ready to go. Right. Um, ready for the free and start giving right. out the structural repairs. To it. Yeah. And then that's when our, our body repair deck uh, with Larry here with us today. He would take a look at it, let us know, you know, what would he need to be removed as well, and in the type of process with it. Um, right. Kind of the similar items, but there might be an additional item that he needs to get around to to fit it better or some other items like that. Um, so it's kind of why we do it. Um, and then we would have a paint technician come across right. as well. You know, right. Rob in this type of way would then take a look at it like, and say, you know, this is what I need to be removed so I can actually respray these areas correctly right back to that manufacturing guidelines of it. And that's what comes into a quality repair, um, honestly. And the quality preparedness is gonna you know, hold that value for that vehicle even more or equal to, you know, when the vehicle first arrived. Well, so, yeah, I mean, with that said, right, if we have these items removed, Rob, as we just had over in, in the paint department, we're finished, it's gonna give us his guidance, right? How are we gonna go about the refinish once we've welded in this radiator support for the adjacent panels that we are working? We'll have adjacent weld burn, right? How are we going to go about restoring this back to that proper olive E coat with color over top of it? Uh, really discussing that plan so that when it gets through, we're all set up to move forward. There's really, no questions. It's self-directed, right? Um, and after that, after we're all done with that, we would add everything to our work order and what would be performed to it to ensure that everything is good, and ready to go. Um, them capture all the photos of everything that's being removed, being reinstalled, the replacement parts, and all that fun stuff too that goes into it. So, um, with that being said, we can hop over to our claims package and show right. you know, how we set it up, how yeah. we set it out to our insurers with kind of like the similar repair completed on it, right. um, and show you kind of all the things that really go into that complete evidence package. So, um, any questions that can come up in there? No, nothing. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thanks, Adam. We appreciate you guys looking into it. Thanks, Rob.
so we'll we'll hop over to that complete evidence package. Um, I'll show you kind of how it gets sent off um, and sent to our insurers. Um, you would get an uh, email kind of like this. Um, it will tell you the complete package for the portal here um, with the vehicle information, the customer's name, um, the, e or the claim number as well. It pretty much tells us, you know, flows the link to the, your claims portal. Um, they easily can go on here and, you know, walk through the whole stages of it. It's an interactive repair plan. You can do the repair plan right on there. Um, video walkthrough. We have a pre-video, a post-video, and a repair plan summary video where we're actually walking through and explaining the repairs and what will be taking place into that repair as well. Uh, Real-time updates on it as well. That that meaning that um, as soon as we actually update something to the software system, it actually puts it into that new that portal as well. Um, so it's super cool, super internet interesting as well. Um, and then you can actually go on to the portal as well and download and save for your reference too. So it's super, super cool. Um, and then it puts right here, it'll send you a link and it'll tell you to view the portal. And then it'll come right up over here. Um, and this is kind of the, the beginning of it right here. Um, and then we go to images. It has all your images from front, rear, side, corners, all the documentation, evidence, everything that's actually gonna be entitled to go into that repair is all readily available for that adjuster, appraiser, independent contractor, whoever's actually reviewing the claim can go right in there and take a look at it. We actually even send this over to our customers as well because we want them to be involved in it just as much as the, repair, the insurance is, you know? Um, we want to show them what we're doing to the vehicle, show them that we're putting that OEM quality back onto the vehicle uh, because that's just, that's what they deserve. That's what was on it before and that's kind of, that's kind of our business model, truthfully, because I would want to put, you know, one of my family members back into a safe, reliable vehicle we don't do any type of use, aftermarket recycle, none of that. It's all OEM. Um, it's a guided repair, and that saves that vehicle and holding that value to that vehicle again. And that's a that's a big state to that customer. You know, that customer wants to hold the value to the vehicle. You know, you don't want to get in an accident and then your car depreciates 75% because you don't know what kind of parts are going back on the vehicle. That's why we're really, really OEM driven bound to it. So it's super, super cool. So. Going back to it, all the documents too, um, all readily available. Um, pre, all the pre-scans, everything is on here for them. Any DEG inquiries, repair guidelines, job aids, service bulletins, everything is readily available for them. So we can provide them that documentation for that OEM replacement, for anything that's you know that they're they're in question to pretty much that's on our work order. Right. Yeah, it's really building all the information needed to one document that repair, right, that's happening or going to happen, and at the same time creating an ease of settlement, right, um, you know, removing questions of why we're doing certain things, and then showing the documentation to, right, to be our, our customer and the insurance company, so that everyone is on the same page, right, what is being put together here is what's going to be completed on the vehicle. Going to be converted into a work order. All these photos are going to be uploaded throughout the process as far as team process photos, right? To finalize these items that are here. But this is what we're building, and this is the plan. And this is, you know, from here, nothing is going to change, right? We are going to repair the vehicle this way. It's guided by the manufacturer. We're going to give that customer a quality vehicle, quality repair, right? That's done safe and properly. Um, somebody asked, don't some of the insurance companies push back against the OEM parts? Yeah, I think you'll always see that, uh, you know, depending on what's written in the policy. Um, that's just how everyone else feels about it. That, you know, we feel that that customer can the OEM parts. We keep them informed, you know, from the get-go on what we're going to be doing um, throughout the repair process. It's what we're using, yeah. right? That's what they deserve. That's what we want to utilize. Right? Some, like, you're putting the customer at risk by using alternative parts. Right. Absolutely. Right? Especially on crash parts. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really on that side of it. That discussion needs to be had with the customer up front, so they're well aware of, of what you're trying to provide for them. Right. Because uh, they may not even be aware of it, but they should. They should. Be. They should be made aware of it. Our job to do so. And then, uh, 
this is going to go out to the insurer and the customer both at the same time once we're actually completed that evidence bank. So right. super cool, super easy tool to use as well. Um, it's, it's very, very, we find a, a big big kind of process in, in this day and age right now um, just because of everyone that's kind of going virtually with it. You don't have a lot of appraisers or adjusters really coming out to shops anymore. I'm not too sure how it is in here anyone's area that they're watching um, but kind of in Ohio we really don't see too many coming into the shop much um, that's kind of avoids it as a, that type of thing too it's very very easy for them to settle the claim with the portal and the evidence that we provide to them because they're typically not here taking a look at the vehicle so we're giving that complete evidence back so it's very very easy to use so. yeah I mean this this part of our process is the heartbeat Right. It's going to allow us to produce for our team, for our customers, for our dealer partners. It allows us to create that consistent quality product every single time. And with all the quality verification, with the processes, with our, you know, just simple visuals that we use throughout uh, every single day of production. And then we can constantly working on items like this to make better for our customers. Uh, that's what it's driven by, right? Everything we're doing is driven by the customers. So, any other thoughts there? We got a, we got a, uh, a shy crowd today. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Adam? I thought we were getting him on here. I know. So, we'll do, we'll do a walkthrough off real quick and I can go find him real fast if you want. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Then maybe Show them the area a little bit, see if they have any questions. Um, let's kind of start off there. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I guess I can kind of talk about just our environment, right, as a team, uh, as part of ECR. We're very team-oriented from the aspect that we, we meet twice a day, sometimes even more as a team to discuss where we're working, where we're resourcing, how we're working together. But you'll see in different parts of our day, very versatile team and we'll have you know technicians in a lot of different areas throughout the world. Um, so Rob for instance who walked us through the CMAX system also has spent time in our repair plan for the uh, part of the this morning. That's all by design, right? Where do we need to work where, where do we not need to work? Right? So by having a team environment with a very versatile team, we can meet customer demand provide a quality repair. We can take a vehicle and set expectations throughout the day uh, for us to hit, hit these accomplishments, hit targets, and do it from a team standpoint, not an individual. So the environment itself is just everything that we discuss, everything that we plan throughout the day is just based around that cluster. How can we really drive those, those vehicles back to them? So, uh, Adam's going to be coming over here in a few minutes. He's kind of going to discuss on like his opportunity where he came from as well. Uh, moving from a uh, different location over to this location and kind of talk about how it's standardized and the same thing all set up in the city. Um, so, I'm going to go run and grab him real quick. Okay. Let's, let's move right over here, here too, just so we can hear a little bit better. <laughs> guys, are too much work going on in here. <laughs> so I'm Adam. I um, started at our matter location as a detailer, and then they told me to come down here and help out, and I came down here for better career growth. Awesome. 
I guess uh, kind of explain the uh, similarities in such a way. I know it's probably set up the production wise a little bit different, but how everything's all standardized in the same place, the same you know exactly where to go to, if something was missing, you know, if you had to get into an area. I mean, everything in our location is all about visual. Like, if you ever need to find something, you shall look up. <laughs> You'll be able to everything see. Everything is labeled for a reason. Yeah, I mean, it, with that said, like, explain the tools and the tool board, right? Uh, the equipment and tools are provided by CCR, uh, right? They're having that tool set up, tool control, putting our tools away in the same exact spot on a daily basis, right? So that next person can really just jump into that role of tool, right? Right. So, like, all of our tools are always in the back of the end of the night. And then we have someone who does tool control where they go to each board and make sure nothing is missing or out of place. We have pictures on each of our tool boards of where everything should go. Um, when you were up in Cuba in the matter of location, um, is it kind of like the same exact tool process? Tool where the tools are located, reassembly, disassembly, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, other than the like, layout of the shop, everything is pretty much identical. So, if you, if, say, if you were to go to help out at one of our other locations, would you be able to readily available to go to each state and know kind of exactly what's going on? Maybe just a different layout on where everything's provided at. I mean, I think it'd be the same. The same thing. Yeah, I mean, we have everything labeled, like right. colors for a reason. So you would be able to go there and pretty much do, do, that, you do what you do here. So, yeah. and that's the and that's the whole goal of it, really. You know, standardizing where you're at, um, creates so much of a better flow um, with it because you know exactly where you're going to every single time, every single day. Um, so it's, a, it's a super cool thing. I'm very very intrigued to it um, just because I I love process. I love keeping things standardized and knowing where everything's going to be at once. So it's, it's super cool. It's super cool. Hell yeah. Uh, somebody asked, is it all OE work or any? is there any custom work? All OE. They're probably saying that because of the, the Mustang we have here at the moment. <laughs> uh, but that's kind of a, it's a dealer vehicle. Um, good friend of the dealership down there. He's been a long time customer. So it's kind of why that Mustang is here at the moment. Um, but they trust, he trusts us to do it, so, um, so we're a certified center for it, so we figure it out with time and we're certified for it. Any other questions? What, what uh, draws you to the PCR? What do you like about the PCR? What do you like about what we have going on on a daily basis? Well, the biggest thing is probably our process and how everything is ran. And they want to see you grow. They don't want to set you in one place and just let you stay. They want to see you expand your knowledge. Sweet. Yeah. Well, you're good, Mike. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. joining us. We appreciate no it. No problem. No, anything else you want to cover and talk about? Um, we don't. Uh, it's been great. <laughs> it's been great. Uh, what's the company? I that's the pop up, kind of see if they're the driving well. Is there any questions from earlier that any, we didn't get to? Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to think of. Does Michael have a question for us? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, maybe we could dive back into it and go around the shop again. Yeah. There's a couple people just saying, nice work, guys, beautiful shop. Uh, one guy just said safety. How do you guys identify different substrates? Using the manufacturer's body construction. So we really, really navigate on the um, Honda SIS site. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much our tool um, in the repair plan. That's how we find all the construction to the vehicle is really going by that certified repair e and that's why we have the subscriptions to it um to pinpoint that documentation for that specific repair to that year maker model of the vehicle so we we live on that um all of our repair planners do um any vehicle involved in any type of accident we're we're measuring every vehicle up front 
even if it's a small hit from a goose hitting the vehicle or some other you know smaller item taking taking a hit to the vehicle we're still measuring that vehicle because you don't know the impact or the inertia that's causing that vehicle to go through yeah. um through the whole structure of the vehicle really because could hit in the front and then it could follow its way to the rear end of the vehicle uh, from the inertia from it um where do you get your oem repair procedures from honda's sis right part of the certification we're on that website all of our documents on you know a lot of like real quick procedures we could probably pull from other sources but when we're diving into a vehicle and we're really getting into that repair plan it's all going to come strictly from sis majority of what we have here is honda and acura so we live on that site from daily basis you know there is updates to certain procedures whether it's the welding and section guidelines um, just changes in the new models that have come out with the 22 civics and 22 mdx's the different uh, roofs now right laser brace roofs all that information as to how we're going to do certain repairs is going to be pulled from that website on a daily basis per that vehicle right we're never really reusing any data from a job we may have done last week because those procedures may have changed that week. So uh, that's where we're pulling them from, and that's, that's what we recommend everyone to do. Yes, absolutely. A huge recommendation because there's some items on there that you wouldn't even think needed completed that actually need completed per the, per the repair guidelines of it. So it's scary in a type of way to think about how many vehicles got an improper repair, uh, but Unfortunately, they can figure it out as they, as they come in. So. Um, then somebody asks, so you guys measure every single vehicle. Uh, why? Well, we want to identify that that vehicle is structurally sound. Uh, right? We're putting our hands on it. We're taking on that liability of bringing that vehicle into the process. And we want to rule out anything that, you know, a couple millimeters is tough to see. Right, you can go old school and say, oh, well, I'm seeing a shift in the bolt heads to that panel and be like, oh, well, this is where this damage was, has that moved or this is where that secondary damage could be. Uh, but so it, it's, I would say a lot of times there's been a lot of vehicles throughout our industry that have reached maybe reassembly and now we're trying to test it, right? So by measuring up front, you're rolling out a lot of unforeseen troubles that you're going to have throughout your facility in, in a process-centered environment, that's, that's going to kill you, right? So we're trying to rule everything, even if it seems over the top, we're going to measure it, we're going to rule everything out that we can. And that's why we keep that point X, car liner point X measurement handy in our repair planning process. Um, that's a really important tool that we use. Um, it, that will really identify really what you have going on, the points that are going on with it. Um, not a full setup and measure on the vehicle is probably what they're getting to on it. Right. Um, we would fully set up and measure the vehicle if it came down to that um, in our in our build out so, That's kind of why we do it, just to just to ensure, you know, right, exactly. that everything is sound for the for the for the customer. We're getting back to the customer. Yeah, I think uh, Michael always mentions, right, it's, it's like going to the doctor, they start with an x-ray, right? That's the x-ray of that vehicle, that's where you're starting. Somebody asked, did your repair volume go down during COVID? Uh, I would say the first month of COVID, we saw a little decrease, but ever since, it's been rocking and rolling, and a lot of inventory, that was out of Right now, but got a, yeah, we got about 125 vehicles on the property. Yeah. Probably studied at about, I would say, about 80 to 90 during COVID. Yeah. Um, our peaks are around about 120. So um, we've currently got about 170 vehicles scheduled in. Um, so we really play to keep a sight on our, our schedule and end process. So we're not overbooking ourselves, causing more delays for any type of pressure or anything like that. Didn't really see it go down too much except for that first month of it. And then it kind of went right back up again. And that's because we took a lot of precautions in the general for our customers. Yeah. Great I think that's good. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we appreciate it. Um, 
there is any questions or anything, please just don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, let me really say, you know, dive into some of the PCR systems, our, our Facebook, our app. The CMAC equipment is awesome. It's a great, it's a great use. Um, I would, if you don't have that Carliner Point X measurement in your stores, I really do suggest it. Even if you feel like everything is good, I, it's, a, it's a great tool. Um, and, it, and it's handy for the technicians, super easy to use as well. Um, uh, that's what I think it is. Body shop business for trying this out with us. Yeah. We appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, sweet.